like I say that every week. <laughs> wow. Feels like a little miracle that we got here. And when you see what we have in store for you, it might not feel like a miracle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll leave that up to you to decide. Yeah. I am really torn about this episode. Because in one sense, it feels extremely valueless in that, by the traditional senses, it's like unpolished, unprepared. It's going to feel very rambly to me, all of which are things that kind of drive me crazy. And yet, <clears throat> it's the stuff I think I wish I had. Mm-hmm. Like, and it might be more relatable than something polished. So. I'm drinking this um, Great Lakes Christmas Ale that a friend dropped off for me. So I just want to... Shout out that friend and say nice. thank you for this seven point five percent alcohol by volume. I don't, I don't usually drink beer, especially on weekdays. If I have one, it's a Friday afternoon. But today I just saw it, mm-hmm. and, and I was like, it. I wanted it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here cool. we are. Um. Anything else you want to say here? <laughs> you just waiting for me. I thought you were going to talk about how whatever the topic we're going to talk about could bring more fire on to you. Because, like, oh, you res- think it will? Uh, Shoot, I didn't maybe think not. Of that. I don't know. Uh, it probably depends <laughs> on, uh, I don't know, a lot of things, but. We shall see. Mm. All right. Well, in that case, that makes me want to light my cigar. But while I do, we can roll the intro, which we forgot to do last week. You're listening to the Fight for Together podcast. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, you know, I, I, it's hard. I don't know the value we provide to you. That That's not as a artist or a recording person or content creator whatever you want to call it we don't get to decide how our audience receives us we just get to decide what we think is valuable and what we uh, want to put out there right that's either either going to make us rich or popular or just make us feel good about what we did for the day and hope that it lands with some of you yeah and um i don't know why i just said all that except for i need to light my cigar now yeah i think if you get caught up in oh is this gonna hit right i mean there sometimes you gotta ask those questions but for the most part i feel like that could be a paralyzing question if you ask it too often or get too serious about it dude my whole wrapper is just like split oh i hate it when that happens Hmm. Oh, what I was going to say was a lot of people like it's so easy to want to be someone else. Like I see people like Joe Rogan. I'm like, dude, that guy is like an encyclopedia. He's so smart. I mean, among other things. But like, you know, and then I see other people they are like, oh, he's so funny. And I'm like, well, I don't feel very funny. And other people are so nice and likable. I'm like, well, I don't feel very nice and likable. But you know what? I'm pretty honest. And I think I'd be pretty vulnerable. And when I think about today's podcast, I think it fits under those categories. Because one of the big challenges I had um, in our early married years was we fought a lot. But especially in the religious world we were in, we'd never heard of anyone else fighting. Mm-hmm. Like that was so, considered something that you just don't like show anyone or yeah, pretend like it doesn't happen or something. So it's hard enough, like the fight. 
Mm-hmm. And then when you start to feel like you're the only one doing it. That almost adds like this like extra layer of shame. Like, oh, I'm, I must be broken if I'm like the only one that struggles with this. Yeah. So I thought about titling these types of segments like TMI. Mm-hmm. But I actually think that's doing our audience a disservice because I say it, I call it TMI because it feels like TMI to some people. Because that's an evaluation of like. Yeah, some people are going to be like, oh, they're doing this again. What a pain in the ass. But other people really might want this type of thing. And if you're one of those type of person, you're my people. Um, okay, we got to recall this story, which we're going to be a little rambly with, but here we are. Mm-hmm. So this was, um, shit, I don't even know what day. Just like a week ago, we'll just say that. And it's funny because we actually have a guest staying at our house. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Ashley. Whoop, 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 whoop. Upstairs right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, okay, so here's the context. I just spent nine months finishing a rough draft of a book. And I finished it, like the rough draft. Now... Okay. My last book, 2,000 Miles Together, took 14 drafts. So in one sense, it's like, no, big fucking deal. In another sense, the first draft feels like it's the hardest to me. Because mm-hmm. um, it's the, like the bare bones. It's like just getting it down. And I fought with this book, man. Like, I wanted to write it in a week, kind of like my first book. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. It mm-hmm. became a much bigger project than I thought. Mm-hmm. So that was really discouraging. Like I was like, oh, Because you man. had this like expectation. <laughs> Total expectation. This plan, this like motivational plan. Like because I knew in a week I could like push myself hard. Mm-hmm. And it just like by day two, I was like, this is not going to happen. Yeah. Anyways, like probably three or four months into it, ran into summer, traveled, ended up taking like two or three months off the damn project. Which was also like really demoralizing. It looks like I come back. I'm like, oh, is this going to happen? Am I a failure? Like, am I going to mm-hmm. be able to pick it back up? Like, I, I'm reading the manuscript again. I don't even remember the stuff I wrote because at this point it's like three or four months ago. Mm-hmm. But I did it. And for the last like probably four to five months, I've spent an hour and a half in my office almost every weekday um, hmm. just like adding chunks. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I could get a word count. It's like 80 some pages, like eight and a half by 11, which translates to definitely a full book size, no problem. Um, Okay, so that's what I did. Yeah. And Cammie and I are sitting at coffee. This is so weird to talk about. I think this shows- It's making me uncomfortable. It's making me uncomfortable too, (laughs) which shows how valuable it is because it's like, we're doing the work for you. (laughs) Now I feel like I'm gonna get the fire. Not you. Uh, I don't. I hope not. Yeah, well, whatever. It's like. Yeah. But better you than me, you know. I mean, Hurt I feel you. like you've gotten more fire than me, so sure. It's like fuck it. Do your part. Um, okay, Cam and I are sitting around coffee, and I say, I finished my rough draft yesterday after nine months. And Cammy says something like, oh, cool. I think I said, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's really cool. I'm not trying to be dismissive, but no, that was. I don't feel like you are. I mean, that's. In what you said or misquote what you said. Yeah. That was it, though. I think, I mean, I could have said like one other thing and then I was, and then went back to whatever I was doing. Okay. So that happened. I think I might have said, because I think you actually said 10 months. So I think I said like, wow, that's cool. 10 months. Yeah. I think that's pretty much what I said. Okay. (laughs) I feel... 
I feel heard now. <laughs> is that, is you get everything, <laughs> every, so. every possible word out of your mouth. That's kind of wishing I said something else <laughs> in that moment <laughs> so I can look better. But So I realized pretty quickly and then like, but a lot of this is probably because of the work I've done with, I would say, 12-step groups and um, therapy and whatnot, that, oh, something doesn't feel right with me. Like, I mm-hmm. feel, and that's a big thing, I guess I just want to say, like. To feel your feelings? Yeah, to know that they're there. A yeah. lot. It's very easy to feel sad, to feel disappointed. And in the past, like in 12-step group language, you just immediately act out. Whether it's, I mean, in the groups I was in, it was like porn and masturbation. There was more of an emphasis on sex. But in other groups, it's like on substances like alcohol or eating or behaviors like cleaning or um, watching TV or going to Instagram. And you just kind of bury the feelings. You're not even aware that they're there. You just find yourself compulsively doing something that Mm -hmm. distracts you from your feelings. But I'm just sitting there. It's our morning routine. And I start to notice like, oh. I, uh, I I don't feel good. Like, I feel kind of disappointed mm-hmm. um, and bummed out and sad. Mm-hmm. And when I could pinpoint why, I said to Cammy, hey, um, I kind of wish when, when I said that I just finished my rough draft after nine or ten months that you would have asked me more questions about it Mm -hmm. because this has been a really big deal to me Mm -hmm. now one of the lessons that's been really helpful for me is to know that just because something's a big deal for me does not mean that cammy knows that and it doesn't mean it's a big deal to her and that's okay but it's still also like i think there's also even if i think it's a big deal to you i don't know what i didn't know what that translated as to like what you wanted from me in that moment because it was a big deal yeah sorry i have all these comments in my head that i've been reading from the vlogs people are still going on and on about how I do or don't (laughs) affirm what you say. So I have to like fucking be on like a game, you know, which isn't true. I actually really feel like people would have more. It's like you could label Mm. yourself some way. Like autistic. Yeah. (laughs) They would have more. And a lot of most people have been great about it. What if I call myself? But like, am I allowed to do that? uh, I don't know about that. That word's like not PC or something. I know, but if I'm calling it myself retarded, mm. is that bad? Uh, I mean, that's maybe not as bad as calling someone else retarded, but <laughs> I think... Uh, that word's out. I think some people would just have issue with the oh, word well, itself. We, well, we don't want those people to have issue with it. <laughs> now, do we here? Okay, yeah, yeah. so I say to Cammy, hey, I wish you would have asked more questions about this. Mm-hmm. And and this, by the way, this is like all in front of this guest that's from out of town, mm-hmm. just like sitting there. Mm-hmm. But Which it didn't like feel. Not that big of a I mean, guest. it felt like slightly afterwards. It felt it felt slightly like, oh, was that was a little weird. But I don't like this particular person I feel like understands a lot and doesn't like isn't very judgmental so yeah it wasn't like I'm not trying to over dramatize it I need to restart the every time this timer goes off by the way it means that like my SD card will only film 15 minutes at a time that's can you get a bigger SD card or whatever no because it has to do with the camera settings actually Mm. Um, and I clap to sync the audio up on the recording software Hmm. and the video for those that are wondering. Um, Okay. And then I said something else. And this was really cool for me to do this. Like there's a lot of progress here for you guys. And that's why we're sharing the story. This, 
this is kind of like for information communication geek relationship communication geeking out nerding people Mm -hmm. um i said to you when you don't ask questions or say more than that's cool Mm mm-hmm because it was actually kind of hard for me to say, and I realized that because Cami doesn't ask questions about my writing regularly, I don't necessarily feel safe bringing it up to her. Mm-hmm. And I want to just be clear about what I'm saying here. I, I'm saying I don't feel safe. I'm not saying that Cami is unsafe. Mm-hmm. I'm not labeling her. Yeah. I'm saying that my feeling is that I don't feel safe. I don't even think it's Cami's fault. Although there are things that I think she can contribute to if she wants to, but that's her choice. And I said, um, when you don't like ask more questions or respond with more enthusiasm or something, Mm -hmm. it makes me not want to talk about this again with you or bring it up. Yeah. And this wasn't like a threat. Like I wasn't trying to say, so do this. Mm-hmm. I was really just trying to tell her like what th- what was going on inside of me mm-hmm. so that she knows because I know that uh, you care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I just really felt like you would want to know. Now, I think we should spend some time talking about your reaction because your reaction was not what I was hoping for at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I got immediately defensive. I felt like all of a sudden I felt unsafe, (laughs) I think. And again, I don't think it was anything Ben did, but in that moment, but, um. Dude, that's a son of a bitch. I know. This, this happens like so much, I think with married couples or partnerships or friendships. like you have like similar... But, like, like, what triggers me, like, also mm. my reaction then triggers you. And then it's just like this. Yeah. Like, downward spiral of, like, feeling less and less safe with each other, blaming each other. Oh, that shit's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think, in general, I realize that I have a hard time when you, I either know or feel like you're disappointed with me. And I think that's my, like, own thing, right? So I think there are times when you bring disappointment to me that I'm able to, like, not get defensive. This was not one of those times. Um, This is something that we've discussed before um, where – and I think when we originally discussed it, there was a lot of, like – hurt feelings around it for me um because well there's the like okay i disappointing you so now i'm talking about like in like a couple of months ago or whatever it was um but i think i felt like oh okay i think that's maybe what bothered me the most was like you saying i it makes me not want to come to you So then I feel like that triggered this like response in me that was like, oh, like, is he going to stop coming to me and going somewhere else for this? And then I felt that felt unsafe to me. I don't know how much to get into like the other whatever the other stuff, but like. Well, I want to tell that story real quick because the history here is I have a friend that for the last year like started asking me more about my writing Mm -hmm. and it was weird because before that no one really asked about my writing consistently is how it felt to me and I was fine with that like I didn't really notice and I didn't really care and I thought well like nothing's up like I don't know It, it I wasn't complaining it just that's just how it is it's like I just write and no one asks and I just do it. Anyways, this friend started to ask, hey, how's it going? What did you write this week? What do you feel uh, good about or bad about? 
And I noticed that I really um, appreciated that type of companionship on that creative level. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know about it before because when you don't have something, you don't notice it's missing. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I really like that. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. And maybe even as a creative, dare I say, I need it. It's a need of mine that was never being met. But just because it's not being met doesn't mean I don't have it. And um, and then, of course, it's weird, like, with marriage. Uh, I don't know what you, you guys' experiences, but for us, we were kind of taught that your spouse is required to meet. Can I just say I hate that word? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Say it. <laughs> yeah. It just, ugh, I don't know. I guess it's just, there's a lot in that word for me. Uh, but go on. <laughs> Your S-P-O-U-S-E <laughs> um, is basically the one that should be meeting most all of your needs. Yeah. Um, sexual, emotional, sometimes practical. And it sounds ridiculous to say this, but this is like kind of I the type it. of pressure that we felt in the communities we were raised in. That mm-hmm. I think it's pretty common, even not in a religious context. Like in our society to have that like emphasis on the one and this is definitely true i mean things get really complicated with open marriage polyamory and um same or opposite sex things like so for example cami was definitely required to meet all of my sexual sexual but even like emotional emotional. feminine companionship needs so if i was to get close to a female friend Right. That's like a big, no, huge no-no where we came from. And like a sign that your marriage must not be doing well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if Cammy, for some reason, wanted something from a dude, whether it be sexual or even just relational or social, mm-hmm. it was a sign that I was failing. Even if it was stated in the platonic realm for yeah. both of these, Yeah. Okay, I don't want to get too much into these weeds, but what I want to point out is sometimes when you open a relationship up, um, not in the, I'm not talking open relationship, sexual, monogamous way, but I'm just talking when you go outside of your system. Yeah. When you open the system up, rather, you learn things. And when our, when, I, when this friend told me, uh, started asking me questions, I learned about myself. And I was like, damn, that makes me feel good when someone asks questions. Now, I think there's a way that this can be very threatening if I go to Cami and say, hey, so-and-so asks questions. So-and-so's better than you. Why don't you ask questions? Um, basically, like, creating competition or a hierarchy. And I think that's actually probably what you felt, even though it's not what I intended at all. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, because we had had past conversation about it that was i don't remember the details of it and i don't think you were you never said anyone was better but you just like stated a fact i guess of like oh this person asked more questions than you i like that so it made you feel inadequate yeah yeah which is weird i mean it's not weird but it's weird that i think that comes from the narrative that we come from that you shouldn't be meeting all my needs well yeah like or it felt like, oh, if this other person is meeting your needs, then somehow that's going to take away from me somehow or that that's like a problem. Yeah. So what was um, weird was you, I consider you my life partner. Um, we've raised six kids together for 22 years. We've traveled the world together. We have a lot of trust. We have joint finances. We have um, joint property and joint a lot of joint resources and schedule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. Mm-hmm. And I want more of that. Yeah. Um, I want more partnership with you. 
So in a way, me saying, hey, like there is a certain realization that if I don't feel safe bringing my creative work to you, I'm going to get the need met somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get it met from you. But also, I don't want to guilt you into that. You don't have to. Like, I don't want to put that burden on you. Because, and I really want to point out, for some people, it's not, they're not cut out. I mean, like, here's another example. I play racquetball with guys uh, three days a week. Mm -hmm. And I love it. But I'm not cut out to play racquetball with you. You're not the person. I don't want to play with you. Yeah. Because you suck at it. We have tried yeah. that. These guys, the level of competition, the level of expertise... We've all been playing for some like 20 plus years each. Right. You don't have to meet that need. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, we can't meet all each other's needs. Like that's just a fact. Well, and, and it, it can, if you have this other, if you're able to see this other side of that, which at times I'm definitely able to see this, it actually can take a burden off of you um, to feel like, oh, I don't have to meet your every need and you don't have to meet my every need you don't have to be good at racquetball yeah and i don't even have to be good at asking questions like it is something that i want to get better at because i think it is is in my wheelhouse <laughs> that's what my friend kate like says a lot wheelhouse but like racquetball i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna put that in my wheelhouse it's just like not gonna happen well speaking of kate like she meets needs of yours that i like dread the idea mm -hmm. of having to meet the types of things <laughs> that you like to talk about with her yeah i am so glad you have a friend like kate that will yeah talk to you yeah and totally enjoys it and you enjoy it and yeah. when you talk to her you feel good and en relieved energized and energized and yeah and a lot of times i like hearing the summary about it and i don't want to say as a whole that those topics are off the table completely for me yeah um and I do want to grow in some of these areas, mm -hmm. but also it takes so much energy for me to meet your needs in those places that yeah. it's so nice to have other friends to go to. Right. And I, I very well may never be as good of a question asker as your friend, you know, um, is, and I think that's okay. Um, it's just like, oh, yeah, like no one can have like all the like strengths, right? Or all the like passions or I don't know. Uh, everyone has like certain ones. But I do think I I do want to like that is some that is a desire of mine to get better at asking you questions or caring, showing care, right? Um, yeah in that area for you and it's it's hard for me because writing is one of those things that happens more or less like in secret like i go off to my office and i yeah. write on a laptop and like and then i close the document when i'm done <clears throat> mm -hmm. so no one ever like sees this thing mm -hmm. um until it's like in paper form and there's boxes of it sitting in our dining room yeah um, right. So it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, I'm sure, in yeah. some ways. And it takes a lot of energy. Actually, I don't always want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes energy for me to like bring it up after just spending an hour and a half on it, and I want to just zone out. Right. But I also appreciate people that are willing to like dig into it even when I don't want to yeah. in a mm -hmm. small picture way because in a big picture way, the writing is such a big part of my life. And if someone's not a part of that – then I don't really feel like I can celebrate with them when I have the big wins or mm -hmm. commiserate with them when I'm really struggling or, or having a big loss, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. So, so because we have expressed a desire for continued partnership and more in-depth, me, it took more work. Like, I think there was a big part of me that just wanted to be like, not in a violent way, but just like, okay, fuck you. I'm going to go and I'm not going to bring this up again. And I'm going to talk to other people about this that feel more supportive and more e they're easier for me to go to. Mm -hmm. But but this is a part of our relationship I really think is worth developing. And that's why I just wanted to say, hey, I, I actually want you to be the one that 
that you come, at least you have the invitation, and I express my desire for you to be more a part of my life in this way. Mm-hmm. Because I, I kind of think that I'm going to write more. That's my goal, at least. It's going to be more of a part of my life, not less. Mm-hmm. And if I don't invite you in now, it could be harder to invite you in later. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But that's hard sometimes. And I guess what I want to say, like, one of the things I've learned as I was thinking about things to talk about for this podcast is... I used to be really frustrated anytime I had to ex- express an explicit desire or ask for it a need specifically. I basically wanted you to read my mind and know what I wanted or needed and just do it. Yeah. And I felt like if I say, hey, I want you to ask a question, okay, what's the point? It loses the magic. It and also I- feels really vulnerable, which if you're not, used to being vulnerable or there's even shame around being vulnerable, then that can make someone like just not want to go there. (laughs) That's what I really think it is. I think it's vulnerable and I think it's scary Mm -hmm. to, to specifically ask for needs for other people to help you meet your needs. Yeah. It, so I used to say like, well, no, you should know them. So I don't have to. So I don't have to be vulnerable, but yeah. and, and I would, but I wouldn't say that. I thought, oh, it's it's more caring if you just know them. It's more yeah. like magical. Which I felt. I think I had the same thing going on, too. And also, there's this other element that I didn't even know what my needs were. Yeah. Like it's so it's so crazy that, I mean, it's not crazy, but it's a son of a bitch if you expect your partner to know your needs and you don't even know what they are oh you're fucked yeah it's like you're gonna be fighting all the time you're not gonna know why the thing that you're always gonna Um, be fighting about which is never about the thing that is actually the pain point so you're not gonna solve it because you're gonna think you're fighting about eggs or chips or right or um or you and i like fought over sex a lot but i just think it was like we both had these like needs around it that we had no idea what they were we just like felt them and we had no, so we had no idea how to communicate. So we went years and years with like pain around that. And I didn't want to, yeah, we didn't have vocabulary around requesting things. Um, so anyhow, yeah, now I just am a huge fan of like the more, and I'm not saying I'm good at this, but the principle being the more direct and specific you can ask people that love you for what you want and state your needs the more likely you are to get it Mm -hmm. and getting it by asking is not any less glorious than getting it by people just fucking knowing it it's not cheating i don't even think even if you have the most in tuned partner i don't think they're gonna know as much as you're gonna no. They shouldn't. They're not you. They're not you. Yeah. And a lot of the reasons um, why people fall in love, in the words of, I think it's Paula Abdul, is that opposites attract. Like what? Uh, yeah. Like so, if you don't have a certain thing and you see it in someone else, you're like, oh, I want that thing. Yeah. So the, one of the reasons why we're together and why we've made it work is because we're not the same. We don't think the same. We don't appreciate the same things naturally. We but don't. we benefit because we get the these different things. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's never going to be intuitive to know, like, I mean, short of spending a decade with you. <laughs> like, the way you think, the things that you appreciate are not is not the way I think. It's not the things I appreciate. And that's actually, uh, I mean, you could say that's a liability, but I actually think that's one of the greatest assets of relationships and open systems is you're going outside of yourself. But... The, to make it work and to not build resentment and to not build walls up emotionally and harden mm-hmm. your heart and become more solo or more isolated, it's going to take some sort of extension or reaching out. And I think as an artist, as a creative, as a human, 
like one of those areas that's it's really hard to do and where i already have a bunch of insecurity i'm already like my book is stupid my art is stupid every other day i'm like this is the greatest thing ever and the next day i'm like this is a piece of crap like no one's gonna read this no one cares who do i think i am to do mm-hmm. this i mean like that that's like just a daily whatever yeah, yeah. but damn mm-hmm. like to be able to say hmm hey, I want you to ask questions about my stuff. Now, here's the thing. She doesn't have to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. there's no gun being held to anyone's head. There's no threats being made. Um, And people can say no, which is, I think, one of the reasons why it's vulnerable. Or not only worse Mm -hmm. than saying no, they could just ignore it, which is how I felt that morning, which I think was, you know, kind of your gut reaction based upon how you're feeling that day and a bunch of other variables going on in our life. I ignored it by being defensive. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. You ignored, you didn't follow the request, which is you didn't start asking about my book or whatever. That's what I mean by ignoring it. Oh. At least at that moment. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess like you could think that's ignoring it. I think I don't think I was ignoring it, but I do think, I think if I would have started asking questions, then I felt like it would have been like fake. Yeah, ignoring is probably the wrong word. I guess I'd go with the word not genu- non-compliance. Genuine. <laughs> yeah, which if I was in a better place emotionally, when I say better, I mean like less triggered. Maybe I would have done that. I don't know, but. And um, I mean, w- w- this <laughs> ended up being like a two-hour conversation that day. <laughs> Because you went up to your bedroom, and I was like, hey, are you okay? And you're like, yeah, that really triggered me. And I'm like, cool, like, take your time, like, think about it. Let's talk about it more later. Yeah. We went on a run and followed up. And things were less triggery, less emotionally volatile, and more just like, mm-hmm. you have two people that care about each other mm-hmm. and um, are just trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah. And then you kind of even said at that point, hey, I wish uh, I could talk more about my songwriting with you. Mm -hmm. You want to get into that a tiny bit? Yeah. I mean, I realize like maybe I'm not, I don't know if I have the exact, I don't have the exact needs as you, but I do have needs around my creative stuff that where I'm like, I want to share, I want to hear feedback or encouragement or something from you on a regular basis, but I, you know, I don't regularly come to you either. Um, I will, I will bring a song to you every once in a while and ask for feedback or haven't done that a whole lot recently, but I was able to relate to you in that way. Um, and then you, and then we even like said, like, and I think this is true. Like I get feedback from people on Instagram about, my creative thing and you don't really have that you know yours is more of like a I'm slogging away for like a year plus and then finally I get feedback versus mine like I'll write a song and then it'll take me anywhere from two weeks to a couple months and then I'll put it out and then I get immediate feedback um, from people now it's not people that I'm like close to usually right so I do think there's a need there. I'm like, I, I would like to have it from you. but. And you even said, when you expressed that, you said, well, I, I don't think that you will have anything positive to say about music or you'll just criticize it or you yeah. uh, won't like it or don't want to do it mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, like maybe I don't have, like I'm not getting the exact... Uh, my what I, exactly what I need or an expectation that I want from you when I do present you a song. I mean, some some of it I do, and then some of it's like. Which what would help me is if you before you play me a song, mm-hmm. you say this is what I want and need from you. Yeah. One, like shut the fuck up until the song's done. Don't interrupt. Two, say the parts of it that you liked the most. Mm-hmm. And then maybe three, if you want, you could say, 
and yeah, I'd like to offer suggestions. But if I just like, after you finish a song, if I just offer suggestions, mm -hmm. even though you have incorporated those and that has been helpful at times, yeah, maybe that's not what you want and that's the most helpful. But, mm -hmm. but even you stating that, like kind of what I said before about specifically hmm. and yeah. overtly is helpful to me because I, mm -hmm. I consider myself my, the, your biggest fan with music, hands down. Hmm. And I want to know how to support you or at least have that option. I'm not saying that I'm always going to be able to do it yeah. the way that you want, but right. you know, just like I want you to support me, like I actually want to continue to learn how to get better at supporting you. Mm -hmm. And here's the fact of the matter. Three years ago, you weren't writing music at all. Mm -hmm. So this is like a new thing. Like yeah. we're learning this. Like yeah. I, I used to know how to support Cammy, the housekeeper. You know, I've never s learned how to support Cammy, the musician. And mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going to be in another three years, but I want to learn how to support that. But this is like a constant process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even for you, like you weren't writing books three years ago. Um. And so it's new, that's also new for me. Yeah. And this is where, like, you know, just speaking to open systems, um, this is something that uh, Dr. Henry Cloud pointed out in a number of his books, I believe. But, you know, the law of entropy or what, ah, oh, shit, is it, I think it's like the second law of thermodynamics, which I believe is the law of entropy, mm -hmm. that says something like, in a closed system, uh things basically slip into entropy or chaos <clears throat> or mm -hmm. disorder. Like shit doesn't get more orderly. Now in an open system, the second you open the system up, mm -hmm. things have the possibility of becoming more ordered or working towards evolution. Mm -hmm. And I think in our relationship, like we've gotten in these like ruts and mm -hmm. these patterns where we're like, well, this is what Cami thinks. Like this is how Cami is. This is how I am. Like we just kind of operate this way. Yeah. And and when we open up the system to uh, new thoughts, new ideas, it could be a book, it could be a podcast, it could be a friendship. Um, mm -hmm. And we, hang on, I need to do this. Uh, I think people think the opposite. It's interesting. Like if the you, more closed it is, the safer it is? Yes. Or even less chaotic. Like if you open it up, all sh the shit will hit the fan. Um, I mean even thinking of like open relationships, for example, if you open that up, like. People are so weird about romance. Like we're taught that closedness is uh, the biggest asset well, you have. Well, and it, shit might hit the fan, right? Like shit might actually get more chaotic before it gets better. But it Certainly all has complicated. to, it all has to do with like, are you willing to, that stuff like, the chaos didn't just create itself. Like it was already like within yourself, but then you didn't like deal with it or something. And a lot of people open up when, when they open up systems, they blame the chaos on the openness of the system. Yeah. Cause they're like, see, when I open the system, then I got jealous. When I open the system, then it got complicated. When I open the system, then I got competitive. Mm -hmm. Well, or I got threatened. That, that's more of a window to look at your jealousy mm -hmm. or to look at your insecurity. Yeah. Or it was, to look it at was your already there, but yeah. then it got like tripped by you, the open the, system. Another person offering value to your partner or friendship doesn't make you insecure. You were insecure. You just didn't, couldn't see it. Now you can see it, mm -hmm. but to cut off the thing of value and the idea of an open system. So that's where I'm so thankful that through this other friendship, I, 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 the point wasn't my friend. The point was myself. Mm -hmm. I learned about myself. I wasn't yeah. saying, oh, this other person is so good at blah, 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 blah. I mean, that could be true, but I learned that I, as an artist, thrive more when I'm able to invite people into my creative space and I can't do it all on my own. Before I mm -hmm. kind of had this glory, like I'm going to go into the cabin, mm -hmm. lock myself in there and come out with a fucking masterpiece. And everyone's Well, you're just learning like, about yourself. Like, yeah. And I actually think that is something that's a little different. I think like I definitely like 
getting feedback and bringing people, inviting people into my creative space. But I don't think I need it as much as you. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. And I actually think it's like, I actually enjoy doing stuff on my own. Um, but you've said like that you realize that you thrive more if like you can share like an ongoing like thing where it's like I'm doing this and you know I think you realize that also with like a few other friends when you were having like and I was a part of this like meetings about like creative stuff we were doing yeah like, I I realized at least when I'm especially struggling in the beginning parts of a project and I have insecurity social kind of like pressure and engagement is one of the few things that keeps me going yeah um mm -hmm. and in that case in that group i was it, i wasn't even talking to other authors i was just talking to other makers like i was making i was writing a book my other friend was writing a book uh my other friend is writing a fiction book and my other friend is re recording an album and then you were like recording an album mm -hmm. so it wasn't even like the same genre it just doesn't matter though like a lot mm -hmm. of the things we were fighting were the same we're fighting the same mm -hmm. demons like demons of perfectionism right stuff like that right yeah so if we're to summarize like what we've learned is helpful for us one is if you have a tight partnership if it's a marriage or a romantic thing or a fucking non-romantic thing i don't care to open the system up to don't limit yourself to where you can get support if if you need to get support from other writers get support from other writers if you need to get support from other athletes or other people that are creating content other instagrammers go after it like it's worth it um to get your needs met as a creative and then if you want like you can always bring that back to the original partnership that like you value and say hey this this really worked for me do you want to do, can you do this well can i fin i want to f add one more point before that which is mm -hmm. and let your partner go damn it mm. don't hang on to your partner one thing i've learned about you cammy you you used to freak me out you used to be so compliant and submissive and quiet like, I feel like I had you in my pocket. Not that I put you there, but you were just, like, kind of there. Like, we mm -hmm. got married when we were 20. You weren't confident at all. Mm -hmm. You looked for people to tell you what to do. I had strong opinions. You didn't. So you, like, kind of, we had this dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then you started to develop this mind of your own. Part of that gets a little scary. It starts to feel a little out of control. I remember, like, you used to always run your tattoo ideas by me. And then you, and then I remember, like, you just went to the tattoo parlor. And you, like, come back with a new tattoo. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that's crazy she just did that I'm yeah like looking at that for the rest of my life <laughs> but i just remember thinking there was an excitement that came with that also that i was like wow i want to be in love with who cammy is not who i want her to be or what that's, you were comfortable with yes mm -hmm. that's i think that the number one relationship killer is like boredom mm. um and for th like one thing that will always be exciting is if you keep on growing into who you are, because I don't know who that is and I, and I can't control it. And actually controlling it is convenient in a way, but it's also boring as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to marry myself. Mm -hmm. Or a version of me that you cre create in your head or whatever. So if you decide that you think it's going to be better for you as a recording artist, to meet with other recording artists, to go on a retreat, to um, record an album, mm -hmm. to meet with a mentor, to read a book. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, if if you're one of those, like, partners that is, like, the controlling type, which I used to be, I think, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, let them go. Mm -hmm. Like, open the system up. And then number two, as you start to learn what you what makes you thrive – if you can get to a point where you can specifically ask for that of your partner openly, not demand it, mm -hmm. but just invite them in and say, hey, this is what really helps me thrive. I would love for you to be a part of that. Yeah. And then to kind of like accept their answer. Mm -hmm. Right. 
or just accept where they're at the moment and then maybe it'll be something they want to like engage with and work on with you. And this is what's hard too, is probably to not take that shit personally. Yeah. Cause you might be raising six kids, homeschooling, running marathons, recording albums. And I'm like, well, because you didn't ask me about my book, we can't be close. You don't care. My book's not important to you. All these things, but really mm-hmm. you're fucking like roasting coffee, making me coffee every morning. Like we're sleeping together. We're like doing each other's laundry and shit. We have a million other partnership ways that we do partner. And this mm-hmm. one is just like, you can't do everything. Mm-hmm. And if I tell a story, if I say like, oh, you're not asking because you don't care. Yeah. That's really damaging, I think, to partnerships. Yeah. That's well, not curious at all. That, that'll that immediately make the other partner probably defensive because you're putting something on them. And then you might ask, not because you actually do care, but just because you don't want me to be like pissed or whatever, which right. is going to be kind of like fake interest. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Yeah. And then I could get resentful for that. <laughs> yeah. So in conclusion, mm-hmm. I think we resolve this by um, kind of saying like, hey, well, let's use our weekly meeting. Yeah as a um, opportunity to ask each other about these types of things, Mm -hmm. knowing that it's not natural for us right now. Mm -hmm. But I think we could grow and develop. Yeah. Yep. Story had a happy ending. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, cool. 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 Yeah. I really like what you just said there. Hey, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. Um, we have these hats here that you can buy at our merch store. I just want to show them off here. This one says Hike Your Own Hike, and it's red, white, and blue. It's sexy AF, if you're a hiker especially. Mm-hmm. This one says Compliance Kills, which... I decided I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining this. Mm-hmm. But if you go to our merch store, yeah, and if you click on the hat, mm-hmm. there's a pretty bomb-ass quote. Oh, really? I should go look yeah. at it. I haven't seen that. I just added it this week. Cool. That shows, like, it's not the exact quote that inspired this, but it shows you the types of ideas that inspire a message like this mm. if it's not intuitive for you already. Cool. Um, and there's a number of ways you can support us if you want to buy our books and albums. All that's in our merch store. You can get a lot of it on Amazon. The links are all below. You can leave a comment on YouTube. You can leave a rating on iTunes or mm-hmm. share this video if you think it'd be helpful for anyone else. Or, or like share it with a spouse or a partner. Sorry, an SPO USE. <laughs> um, spouse. Don't want to trigger anyone on this podcast um mm-hmm. don't want to trigger Appreciate any that. fellow podcast hosts mm. um but yeah i would love to hear if this helps you guys process your own in your own partnerships as you're going on these creative endeavors because the creative endeavors are hard like shit to like uh, like i mean i just know how hard it was for you at the age of 30 to pick up learning a guitar mm-hmm. you know and like yeah. you were like, oh, it's too late. Oh, I've never played guitar. Oh, I'm not musical. Oh, no one wants to hear me. Oh, I suck. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a mom. Like everyone wants to hear everyone else is more talented. I mean, God damn. Mm-hmm. And like, but I'm so glad you did it. And yeah. th- like there's so many creative endeavors we have, like things that we <clears throat> put aside for the things that society tells us are important. Oh, don't like learn how to woodwork or make a t-shirt because you need to look out for your kids needs or you need to make money or focus on a job because that shit it gets accolades like it's easy to quantify people are always like oh what do you do for work Mm -hmm. like i have a hard time with that because people are like what do you do for work and i'm like "Uh, i'm an author and i'm like but i don't make any money (laughs) (laughs) so it doesn't feel like a real like it doesn't feel like real work Mm. but i could i think it's the most important work that i do right now it's a it's the work that gives me the most life right 
So I think learning how to figure out our like motivations in these areas of which me having you as a partner, Cami, has been one of the most productive things in the other areas of my life, like finances, hiking, traveling, parenting, um, just like even our housing setup and our living situation. So why would why wouldn't we like use it as an asset and learn how to develop and, and grow it in our artistic endeavors? That's mm-hmm. why I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. So, okay, shit. I was like trying to sell shit, I guess. So you can, yeah, iTunes, you can leave a rating. <laughs> um, and I also do uh, coaching, like monthly personal coaching. If you want to do that, you can sign up on our Patreon. And for that... We can talk about anything. We can talk about this stuff, relational stuff, hiking stuff, uh, personal goals, finances, uh, how to run a blackjack team if you want. (laughs) Uh, Sky's the limit, baby. Yeah. Right on. All right. That's all I got for you. Thank you for listening to Fight for Together. We'll see you next time.